over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, Carver High, uh, let's get into the rest of the uh, baseball games on tap for tonight around the show so we can make some money. Yes, let's do that, Scotty. We will start in Tampa Bay where the Yankees come in uh, limping in, I guess you could say, after a miserable performance in Oakland and Anaheim the past week. Uh, tonight they go with Domingo Herman. Spring starts for the Rays. Rays minus 130, Yankees plus 105. Total of seven in this one, Scotty. Tampa's won six in a row at the drop. Uh, they're six games back of the Yankees in the East. This is a gigantic series for them and the Yankees. The Yankees come in just absolutely out of gas after an embarrassing trip to Oakland and Anaheim. Now they got to play this team that's won eight of ten. I'm taking uh, Springs and the Rays over the Yankees tonight. I got to tell you, and... Uh, then it'll be five. If they win that game, it'll be five. I got them at a, a buck and a quarter. I know it's at like either a buck 25, buck 30 land. The Mariners are in Cleveland to take on the Guardians. They took three out of four from them last week in Seattle. Louis Castillo goes for the Mariners, Scotty. We have a late breaking change for the Guardians tonight. Zach Plesak was supposed to start for them. He will now go on the injured list with a, fran a hand fracture. The thinking is, is that apparently he punched the ground last week after giving up a home run against the Mariners, and he fractured his hand. So, Zach, don't call me Dan Plesak is out. That means you get Cody Morris tonight for the Guardians, Scotty. The Mariners are minus 135, total 7.5. The Cody brothers from Animal Kingdom yes. is pitching? Yes. Uh, yeah, give go. me Castillo and uh, Seattle here over Cleveland. And uh, Plesak punched whatever because his record is so awful he needs to keep punching yeah. things with his other hand to break that one too uh texas and the red sox at fenway again tonight dallas keichel we talked about it earlier nick pavetta goes for the Sox. red sox minus 185 plus a buck 50 for the rangers total of nine i mean i, I literally the red sox are going to score 13 runs on keichel he gives up eight or nine <laughs> runs a game automatic and he's pitching at Fenway. Tack on another four. They're going to have at least 13 runs. David Peterson for the Mets tonight at City Field against the Nationals. Josiah Gray goes for them. Mets minus 275 here. Nats plus 220, seven and a half the total. Who names their kid Josiah? Honestly, I got to go with the Mets just for that reason. <laughs> Sandy Alcantara in Atlanta tonight for the Fish. Charlie Morton, speaking of fishermen, goes the for the fishermen. Braves. They're minus 175, <laughs> total of seven in Atlanta tonight. We have taken nicknames to a whole nother level on this show. Like, you've had we Boomer do have. it. You've had a lot of people do it. No <laughs> one does it like we do it. Your golf <laughs> nicknames are the greatest ever. And then everything else we do is, you know, just icing on the cake. Uh, anyway. Uh, I'm on Atlanta and the Fishermen tonight to beat Sandy in Hot Town. How do you like them apples? I like it. Let's get it. I like it. Uh, the Twins and the White Sox. The Twins, Scotty, have now gotten to within one game of the guards for first in the Central. The White Sox, as we know, they have big problems. Uh, tonight, the Twins are going to throw Sonny Gray. White Sox going with the bullpen tonight. Uh, Joe Kelly will start it as the opener, and they'll try to piece it together from there. Minus 135 for the Twins. Eight is the total. I mean, that is just a horrible idea. Twins move into a tie for first place tonight with the Guardians' loss and a Sonny Gray win. We welcome all of our radio affiliates Sirius XM Sports Map Sports Byline. Good to have you with us on a pain free Friday on Coast to Coast. Cubbies and the Cardinals in St. Louis. Jordan Montgomery has been outstanding for the Redbirds. He goes again tonight. Didn't he have the complete game shutout against the Cubs, too, uh, in, in, involved in this streak? Sampson goes for them. The Cardinals minus 250, total of eight. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's 5 0 uh, with the Cardinals. 
and he's not afraid of anybody. I actually think it's going to be a great game tonight, and I like the Cardinals in the under. Lance McCullers and Detmers in Anaheim, Astros and the Angels. Astros minus 150, the road favorite, plus a buck 25 for the Angels. Eight and a half the total in this one. Again, because, uh, you know, I don't think Detmers is that bad. I, I like his ERA. I like what he does, the work he puts in. Uh, he's already got over 100 innings. He's got a no-hitter. I like the under, but I'm still on the Astros. The Diamondbacks have been very good to us recently, Scotty. They have the Brewers in town again tonight. Lauer goes for them. Zach Davies for the Diamondbacks. Uh, minus 105 D-backs, minus 115 Brewers, 8.5 the total. Yeah, I like the under here again and a great game because I like Lauer. I'll give you this. I hit a big bet with Lauer last week. Remember, I was telling you about it yes. when he won his 10th game. But he didn't pitch well at all in that game. I hope he pitches better than that tonight. I like Lauer to win the game and the under. You, Darvish, and Dustin May, Padres and Dodgers at Chavez Ravine, minus 165 for L.A., 8 is the total. I already told you, home run city, Dodgers, yep. over. Uh, and the Phillies and the Giants are final one. Alex Cobb and Kyle Gibson, Phillies minus 105, Giants minus 115, seven and a half out in San Francisco. Yeah, how about this? I got the Phillies today at a plus a buck three. Ooh. So I love the Phillies against there the Giants. Go. Their losing streak continues at Oracle. Nice. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game yeah, live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. But who do you think, Kevin Walsh, is the best wideout in all the National Football League? Oh, boy. So I, I think we often lean towards it, Avante Adams. I, I think it's sort of the most fascinating conversations because it feels like the answer to who's the best wideout changes quite often. One thing I always feel yeah. like I can revert back to, though, on someone who's not uh, near the top of this board and pretty much has no chance to have the most receiving yards due to a six-game suspension is DeAndre Huff. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. So speaking of hurt, Dalvin Cook, that's been his story the last few years. But certainly when he's on the field, the way I like to describe Dalvin Cook, Davis, is that when I'm playing against Dalvin Cook and I don't have him in fantasy and I know he's fully healthy, I'm worried. I'm worried going into that week because I know he's going to have a good game. Over 1,000 yards last year and six rushing touchdowns. Another top 10 pick for Dalvin Cook. But my guess is, uh, Davis, that this may be the last time we see Dalvin Cook. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Ricardo and so the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Gambling progress in Albania. Yeah, we owe it to our viewers to talk about other countries as well. Three years ago, they were just like Eastern Europe and the rest of Europe and the U.S. after the Supreme Court decision, as prolific as they possibly could be to maximize revenue and the like. 2019, change of administration, politics ground to a halt and the legal issues as well. And since the state controls all of the internet, all of the media, they went from having necessity of gambling to totally illegal almost overnight. Well, what does it take? International pressure, the big companies, 
Albanians' robust population, and maybe more important than anything else, they need the money, like everybody else. So just as quickly as it evaporates, if you want to bet and go to Albania, you're going to be successful. So I have a dog, Boston, that is 130 pounds. He means business. And I was taking him for a walk today and he was dropping a gigantic, like 20 pound yam in this guy's front yard. And the guy came out and he was looking at me like, what are you doing? And I said, do you have the bet MGM app? And the guy goes, what? I said, yeah, you bet $10 on any game. You get $200. If either team hits a home run, if you use the bonus code MLBHR 2022. And he said, are you going to pick up that yam? I said, I got it. I got a plastic bag right here and I cleaned it up and I said, 10 bucks on any game, 200 if either team hits a home run, MLB HR 2022, don't forget. And when I was walking away, I looked and the guy was downloading the app. I saw him do it, even though he gave me the finger. I'm just glad he downloaded the app. That is much more important uh, than what you were dealing with with Boston there, making sure that he gets that app in there. That's that's the way to go. Uh, I just right. saw your boy Paul is now up 2-1 in the fourth set. Uh, as the guy Casper Rudd, apparent, you know, dealing with the blisters on his face. No, listen, listen. Having a How about this guy? Time. He was up 40 love, up 6-5, I mean. and he <laughs> lost 7-6 yeah, in the third it. in a tiebreak. He was up wow. 40 love, up 6-5, and lost in a tiebreak. I, I almost had a stroke. Now the guy, Casper Rudd, is playing with bleeding feet. They, they've had to, like, stop the match. He's got giant bleeding blisters oh, on his they feet. Gave him, and, they gave him a long break before. At least 10, 15 minutes they gave him a break. His before. feet are bleeding. And they, why, why does he get that much time to recover so that I can lose my bet? Yeah, uh, they give these guys a break. After that third set, they had a, it had to be at least 10, 15 minutes they broke. The guys were changing their shirts. He was messing around with his feet, the whole deal. Uh, we'll keep our eye on this uh, on the Rudd match oh, here. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have the Paul big one, Carver. Oh, uh, big some one. NFL uh, for oh. you here. Now, when we come back, oh. Scotty, on Tuesday, it's Pain Day week. Uh, it's time Payday. when we come back. Uh, Pain Day's Payday. ready. Uh, it's over, man. The summer, the off season, the nonsense. When we come back Tuesday, full steam ahead. The National Football League season, Bills-Rams on Thursday night, less than a week away, a full Sunday slate for us to go after next week here on Coast to Coast. But I'll give you a couple things before we get there. Jimmy G, of course, staying in San Francisco. Let's get his thoughts, Scott. He sounds like, you know, things maybe weren't going to work out, but then they did. Overall, I guess it sounds like he's happy to stay there. Here's Jimmy G. At what point did, did it cross your mind and become a conscious thing like, you know what, I could end up back here. Really wasn't on my mind, to be completely honest. I mean, it, <laughs> I was training out here. Uh, I had to be here, so I was, I was here for the, that reason. But uh, I don't know. I was just trying to get my body right, like I was saying, getting the shoulder right. Uh, I felt very confident out there, and I knew that I was ready to roll. I just needed to figure out where it was. And, you know, things kind of fell into place uh, these last couple of days, really, just right before it all happened. Didn't you at any point to say, hey, I've, I've done some good stuff here. Release me. Let me go find a place. Uh, well, it, that just wasn't the way I wanted it to go. I think uh, that, that there was a thought of that at one point. Trust me, there was. But um, that came and went. And I don't know. Things just kind of kept falling into place. And I'm one of those people that, you know, I don't want to really ruffle the feathers too much here and there and kind of want to just go with the flow and that's kind of the way the training camp was going, and I was happy with it. And uh, like I said, things worked out, and I'm happy now. Listen, uh, he's going to, I believe, A, play at some point, and I do believe they're going to hand this team over to him. I don't believe Lance is going belly to belly as the starting quarterback of the Niners. But if he does, so be it. He'll make $6.5 million. If he plays, he'll make $16 million. And then... When the season's over, he'll go and make $40 million in his next deal because 
This is it. One and done in San Francisco. They will never do another deal with him. This is uh, like, thank you for everything. Thank you for going 31 and 14. Thank you for uh, title games. Thank you for going to the Super Bowl, which they blew, by the way. And I thought they blew the game against the Rams last year because your boy Tart uh, with the fart uh, blew the game and dropped the pick. You can blame him. I do blame him. I don't, you know, one play doesn't make a game. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And then uh, it, now they're just being nice to him. And he's going to stand on the side. He's not going to look over his shoulder, Lance. My ass. He's not going to look yeah. over his shoulder. The guy on the sideline is 10 times better than him. It's very true. Uh, and that should be the last time. Like it's re- You don't do too many press conferences with the backup quarterback. I know he just signed a new deal. Uh, but now that it's time, I'll uh, be interested to see. Uh, we won't see Jimmy G anymore except standing on the sidelines with the clipboard. You he's mentioned a, a lot star. of money. He is. And you, like you said, he likes to date. Uh, certain movie stars as well. Hot chicks. So hot chicks. Stars. He's good with that. Uh, speaking of lots of money, Russell Wilson yesterday, Scotty, five years, two hundred and forty-five million dollar extension, one hundred and sixty-five million guaranteed. Looking fine out there in Denver with a lot of money. I saw pics of that house that he bought out there today too on Twitter. Nothing like the four bedroom, twelve bathroom house. Uh, that he bought there with Ciara. Here's Russell, Scotty. Not only does he love money, but winning is more important than money uh, oh, to yeah. Russell Wilson. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, just get this journey started. You know, it's, um, you know, I came here knowing that, um, you know, I was going to be ready to play on these two years and everything else. But I think uh, when George came to Mark and, and I and, hey, what, what do you think? And, and we started talking about everything. We got really excited about the idea of being here for a long time. And, you know, my focus, um, obviously, number one focus is winning. You know, that's why I came here is to win. The number one focus is winning and doing everything, the whole process of that. Um, and we're on that we're on that journey right now. We're really looking forward to it. I think the second thing is is that to be able to make a difference. You know, I really believe much is given, much is required. You and, think they'll uh, fix that microphone Sarah, for the next press conference? Get to do uh, <laughs> some of the most entertaining things in the world, sports and music. What the happened most entertain- here? Entertaining things in the world every day. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I honestly, I, like, I'm just such a, a jerk that I think they're going to get burned on this deal. I really do. Oh. And that guy's going to make $250 million, and I, I bet he gives him about a, a buck. Uh, I'll give him $100 million worth of, uh, uh, of success. Now, if I give someone $250 million, I want $250 million worth of success with at least two Super Bowls. But I don't think that's happening. That's my guess. Uh, like that guy, he went to two, won one, then went off the deep end and then blamed everybody with the offense, the coach. We don't pass enough, blah, blah, blah. Now he's in Denver where everyone thinks they're going to the Super Bowl with that vaunted team yeah. that didn't make the playoffs at all with their great defense that didn't do anything. All I've heard is how great Denver is and how great he is. And I'm counting the days till he's not. I give him two good years there. You already saw what happened to Peyton Manning there. He got it done, and then he started throwing ducks. So do you really think he's going five or six years? Do you really think he's going to like go I mean, he's, the distance he's, and he's, just keep winning in Denver? Do you believe that? No. Look, uh, he's a lot younger than Peyton was when he got to Denver. I mean, he's only 30, 31 years old. He should get – he should have five somewhat productive years. Do I think they're going to win the Super Bowl or be – this great team every year that he's there? No, I do not. I don't think that they were a quarterback away from winning. I, I think they have other problems as well. There's too many um, great teams in the AFC, including is. your team. I agree. Uh, I'll save you Dak for Tuesday because that does carry over, wanting to prove the doubters wrong. Let's get Mike McD heading us into the weekend, Scotty. Mike McDaniel, we have lots of fun with him now almost every single day on Coast to Coast. Uh, he's even dropping the bomb, Scotty, during the press conference now. Here's McDaniel. Whoa. I mean, I, you have to talk me out of not trying to pitch to Chris to draft a defensive line lineman or edge every f-ing. Oops. Whoa. Whoa. Coach speak. Um, coach speak. <laughs> Your boy, Coach That was speak. just fantastic. He's my favorite yeah. coach now in the league. Behind Tomlin. Uh, uh, next week, he starts off with Bill Belichick, Mike McDaniel. Dolphins yeah, good luck with that. Your heart 
racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Liu, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record, I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year. Right, taking the over on that one, to be quite honest with you. There's a lot of questions in Houston that they're still trying to figure out. It's a young team, and I think it's going to be kind of an up and down year for them. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. You know, I don't think I can quite get to taking him over Cooper Cup, but I definitely do think there is a, a very solid argument. And, and average draft position agrees with taking him over Jamar Chase. You know, Chase also plays with another absolutely phenomenal wide receiver in T. Higgins. Uh, Adam Thielen is a good wide receiver, but I think at this stage in his career is definitely better suited for being a, a complimentary piece. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, Learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. The Ace series was laughable. And then uh, again, they lost to the Angels that series. Now it's down to six, and they head to Tampa for three starting Friday, and their lead is only six. If they get swept, it could get down to three by Monday morning. Since I've been on with you doing this, I've been telling you that the Yankees are, you know, just simply built for the regular season, and it looks like they're just built for the first half of the season. The Sports Grid Network. I mean, honestly, uh, Kent Sterling's our good uh, buddy in Indianapolis, does everything with us uh, in terms of the Colts. And we were just talking in the break about uh, the Indiana game tonight. And he said they won't even name the starting quarterback. I'm like, they haven't won a game that matters in 75 years, and they're keeping their quarterback a secret. I mean, this guy, (laughs) Allen, is he not the most overrated? Like, you remember two years ago in the COVID, everybody got all hot and bothered about him, put him on the cover of Sports Illustrated that he was this great coach. How did he do last year with Indiana? What they lose? Nine games? And he won't name a quarterback for tonight's game? No one he cares won't. about your quarterback who's starting when you're as a loser program as they've got. Honestly, Ken. $4.9 million a year is the average of what he's going to make through 2027. And the buyout is 100% of every dollar he's owned if he's fired before December 1st. 2024, Scott. So there you go. That's Indiana football in a nutshell. Yeah, I just, I got to tell you, it's beyond me. And then like, I'm sitting there looking, they're playing Illinois and I'm like, they're, they're favored by a point. I'm like, Indiana favored in a football game. You got to be kidding me. And you know, I went there, it's my alma mater. And I always tell people, believe me, you, the hyper where they play basketball, there's like 50 courts down there on that campus. You know, it's notorious. There's better pickup basketball there in that gym on Christmas Day than the entire history of Indiana football put together. 
Like one day on Christmas is better than 100 years of Indiana football. It's so embarrassing. It's a basketball school. Whenever I see Indiana playing football and they're on ESPN, I want to puke because they always lose. I can't take it anymore, Kent. Yeah, tonight I don't I don't anticipate it being a lot of fun. Illinois is coming off a win against Wyoming and in Indiana's Indiana lost all nine Big Ten games last year. So, you know, knock wood, the Hoosiers are gonna be okay tonight, but I, I have no confidence. All right, so I wanna start with you. It's good to see you, by the way, buddy. Uh I wanna start with the situation with uh frankly, the kicking game. So uh Mad Hack. They ended up getting him from Buffalo. They did a really good job choosing the, the punter that didn't rape anyone uh, and made him their punter. So, and not only that, you had uh, this guy, Rigoberto Sanchez, tore his Achilles. So they had to get a punter. So they got hack. And then they also uh, kept Blankenship as their kicker. So the kicking game, which is important, this is the NFL. You better have a kicker or you're not going to win games in the fourth quarter or overtime. So how do they like it with Hack and Blankenship? Yeah, Hawk looked really good in the final preseason game against the Buccaneers. Had four down inside the 20 in the five kicks that he had. Had an average of over 50 yards. Uh, Blankenship flat out beat Jake Verity in the kickoff that they had throughout camp and throughout the preseason. Verity has a really, really strong leg, but he was a little bit wayward. And it looked like Rigoberto, or, uh, Roberto Blankenship is a guy who they can trust a little bit. Uh, whatever injury he had last year has been corrected, and he's kicking him straight and true, and they feel really good about him. Did the guy say anything about his experience in Buffalo being uh, cut? And, and they kept a guy that has been accused of gang rape. And then, they, I mean, they knew, they admitted they knew, and they still kept the guy for like another 10 days before they, uh, the, the media and the fans in Buffalo turned on them so crazily. They went after him so thick that they, they dropped him that night. Uh, did he have a reaction to what it was like being around that? He has not been made available to the media, so we have we haven't had a chance to ask him or or hear from him. So uh, I I can't imagine he would make any comments about about the other guy about Ariza and and his travails. But he I know he's happy to be in Indianapolis and he's happy to be employed and he wasn't for a little bit and now he is and and Buffalo kind of bet on the wrong horse. Well, why would they not let him talk to the media? What has he got? Is he hiding diamonds or something? Why, why, uh, why not talk? He's a professional football player, and they're treating him like he's a child. What's that about? Well, nobody wants to talk to the punter. And the way they do it now, it, it used to be different before COVID. You kind of wandered around at camp, or you wandered, wandered around the locker room, and you talked to guys. But now they have nothing but podiums. And so you've you've either got to request a guy or they decide who's going to be made available. Like Shaq Leonard was made available yesterday uh, because he's had a couple of days of practice under his belt. But I don't know that anybody's requested Matt Hawk, to be honest with you. I got to tell you, I think it's fascinating uh, that I want to know what it was like to be around that mess. He was right in the middle of it. No one's ever asked him what it was like. He got the short end of, a, of the stick. But he ends up, you know, I got to tell you, look, Buffalo is a better football team. Everybody knows that. That's fine and dandy. But he's going to a team uh, that doesn't have that drama going on anymore. And now he's going to be on a team that I think could be very well dangerous with Matty Ice, at quarterback. That guy's got all kinds of football left in that body and arm. And he can take a hit. That guy has been mauled in Atlanta for the last five years. He keeps getting up and slinging it. You know, the, the thing with Matt Ryan is whether you can protect him adequately. When the when the Falcons have gone to the playoffs, he has averaged getting sacked 26 times. When they haven't gone to the playoffs, the average sack number for Matt Ryan has been 37. So if if the offensive line of the Colts can kind of keep him upright, and, and he's done a really good job of schooling up the receivers, putting them in a position where they understand when the ball's coming and where it's going to come, and it comes quick. He gets it out quick. Carson Wentz was a guy who held on to it and held on to it and held on to it and took a lot of punishment. This is going to be different. And 
Wentz is a guy whose dropbacks were not routine. They like five step drop meant different things, different snaps. With Matt Ryan, he is really precise with his footwork. That makes him easier to protect, and he gets it out much quicker than Wentz. I think this is going to be a better Colts team because of that. The O line is going to look better because of Ryan. The receivers are going to look better because of Ryan. I think Ryan kind of spackles over a lot of holes in this Colts team. So uh, who exactly is he throwing it to? I know Hilton's still on the team. He's had his fair share of injuries. Uh, At camp, who has been the targets? Michael Pittman Jr. has been really good. He's coming off a year where he had 88 catches and 1,082 yards. He and Carson Wentz kind of had a thing going, had a good rhythm. The, the Pittman and Ryan have gotten together off-site and have developed kind of a rhythm. And in practice, Pittman looked really, really good. They've got second-round draft pick Alec Pierce. Pierce coming off a good final season at Cincinnati. Has really progressed from the time that OTAs were going on He looked really raw. He looked nervous. And throughout camp, he got more and more self-assured. We'll see what he can do as a rookie. And then you've got Paris Campbell, who's played a total of 15 games in his three seasons, has been incapable of staying healthy. He says for the first time, he's 100% healthy. He's good to go. Those are kind of your top three guys. Then you've got Ashton Doolin. Uh, You mentioned T.Y. Hilton, not on the roster right now, but not a guy that the Colts have ruled out bringing back. Maybe Chris Ballard does that. Maybe he doesn't. He refused to rule it out a couple of days ago when he talked to us. So let's talk Ken Sterling with us uh, about Jonathan Taylor. Does he go over 2,000 yards this year? Because he was on the doorstep last year. He's the best running back in the NFL. Yeah, he led the league in running by 552 yards. He led the league in rushing after contact. The number of yards he put up after contact was more than anybody else ran for a period. So Jonathan Taylor is really, really good. He's explosive. He's elusive. He runs faster than anybody in the NFL. A terrific guy as well. I, he's, but if you, if you use him too much, if he gets 2,000 yards, that means that this offense isn't running the way it's supposed to. Frank Reich wants to throw it between 57 and 60% of the time. Taylor, even at five and a half yards a carry, he'd have to carry it over 350 times to get to 2,000 yards, and that's not where his sweet spot is, and that's not where the Colts want him to get. Listen, I don't think uh, Carson Wentz uh, was good uh, with the Colts at the end. I, I thought it, I thought it was somewhat ugly. But I have to tell you, I thought that Ursay and Ballard. Uh, were very nasty with this guy going out the door. I have never seen an owner or a general manager talk so badly about a football player publicly in my life. I I think Ursay and Ballard look like absolute idiots the way they treated that guy going out the door. Just get rid of him. You don't have to spend hours talking bad about him on top of it. Yeah, Jim Ursay had no fondness whatsoever for Carson Wentz back to the time where he didn't get vaccinated, so he put his availability at risk because of NFL protocols. Uh, He had an undiagnosed foot injury that kept him out of almost the entirety of training camp. There were some things in the locker room that didn't go reported and, and have been only mentioned off the record that weren't real positive about Carson Wentz. So when Jim Ursay talked about the chemistry and about the lack of leadership, there, there's meat on those bones, but it's not meat that anybody's willing to be specific about. Uh, I'm, I'm short on time. Real quick, is Frank Reich on the hot seat? I don't think so. They signed him to an extension a year ago. Uh, I think that he's got another year in him. You can kind of feel the rhythm with Jim Ursay, and this would be an out-of-rhythm firing, even if uh, Frank Reich didn't get it done this year. I got to tell you, I don't trust that owner or that GM. The way they showed me, the way they treat people, I'm telling you, I don't trust any contract, any extension, nothing. They open at the Texans. Kent, great stuff. We'll see you again during the season.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College National football today. Alabama and winning SEC champions. It's the island of misfit to it. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Years when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash of In injuries. Game, line, but you take all the access. points. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In I'm game go. live, prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. I don't know how it's going to work out for him, but I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season. Maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category. Earlier in his career, he would have gotten out. I mean, I guess he had 108 rushing yards, but six rushing touchdowns in his career. So it doesn't give you any upside there. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Kev, how do you evaluate the Vikings entering 2022? I think there's optimism around this group. How much of it is tied to pessimism around Green Bay? That's probably in the eye of the beholder. But I think this is a talented football team, and I think there's absolute opportunities on this schedule. But the more important thing than maybe being favored in 10 of those games, Ben, is only twice you will see them a dog over a field goal. Three and a half plus. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. What do you think of his deal that they gave him today? I thought it was good to get him locked in and to help the, with the salary cap so that the team can manage it over the next several years. If you want the guy, it's good to get him locked in. And obviously, Russell Wilson, in my opinion, is worth every penny. Prior to that last season, he was number one in EPA, number one in yards per attempt, tied for the most uh, passing touchdowns in the NFL. The Sports Grid Network. Adam Cavan is our NFL insider on Sports Grid and on Coast to Coast. We'll get a rotation with him regularly, as usual, on the show. I think we start doing next week, uh, Monday, Thursdays, and Fridays, with Adam. He's always on C2C, and our uh, season starts next Thursday in SoFi and Lipstick City with the uh, Bills and Rams. Should be a great game on Thursday Night Football. Let's start today uh, with the Cowboys situation at left tackle. Obviously, they're going to start the rookie. They're going to. It's going to be Tyler Smith. You and I talked earlier. I wanted to earlier so I wanted to follow up on it. So, Jason Jason Peters. Okay, this is incredible. He turns forty one. Pharrell in January. He is visiting with the team. As I understand it, they definitely have interest in signing him to a one year deal. Not nothing's done yet. Uh, if it doesn't happen, it would surprise me. If you look at the available left tackles left in free agency, there's really nobody. Other than Eric Fisher, now Eric Fisher's much younger, uh, about eight or nine years younger, but he had a Achilles injury two seasons ago, and uh, he's not found a lot of interest out there. But if you're looking for experience, a guy who will be a Hall of Famer someday, it's Jason Peters. Now, talking to a Bears source, he actually played fairly well over the 15 starts when they signed him in the middle of late last August. He only had three weeks to get ready, uh, ready for the season. Actually, less than that, probably more than two weeks to get ready for the season. But they thought he played fairly well, held up. In fact, uh, the person I spoke with thought that he absolutely shouldn't retire. Clearly had something left in the tank was the, the, the quote that I got. So the Cowboys are smart to look at him. Now, as I understand it, Pharrell, 
Peters would not come in and start. That's not really their plan. Their plan would be to look at Tyler Smith first. He would start. Peters could be the backup left. He has some experience, believe it or not, with the Eagles getting some reps at guard. But they want to go with Tyler Smith first. But they need an insurance policy because if it doesn't work with Tyler Smith or he gets hurt, they don't have anywhere else to turn. So Tyler Smith is the guy now, the first runner out of Utah, who was a surprise pick that early, as I told you on Coast to Coast earlier this week. The word around the league was more of a project, a guy you would rather get late, second, early, third, bring him along slowly. But with the Tyron Smith injury, they're not doing that. They are going to go with Tyler Smith, now the rookie from Tulsa. Okay, so explain to me, if he's such a, a third rounder, why'd they take him so high? Because they thought, okay, their plan was not to start him year one. In fact, to get him reps at another position, to get him ready to play, they gave him reps at left guard. He competed against Connor McGovern, who's a fourth-year guard. And McGovern beat him out, which his natural position, for Pharrell, because of the length at 6'6", and his athleticism right. is a tackle. But the word around league was he's so raw, he wouldn't be ready year one. That's why teams did not see him as a first-rounder. But the Cowboys were just thinking, Tyron Smith, he's our left tackle. We'll bring we'll bring Tyler Smith along slowly, but he got hurt. They can't plan for that. So they're going to throw him in there. And this is the thing, for real. when you and I talk about the Cowboys' odds, how in the world are they still the favorite? Last look within the hour, they're still the favorite just a little bit over Philly to win the NFC East. I don't believe it. Remember now, we've not had a repeat winner, Pharrell, in the NFC East since 2004. So the odds are against the Cowboys to be a repeat winner. Well, you and I have uh, had this conversation at nauseum about your feelings about the Eagles. And I'll say this, yeah. that uh, I've already said on this show a number of times that I, I believe already that Howie Roseman is the executive of the year in the NFL. And let me tell you why. He has done more moves. I mean, this guy is moving on a daily basis. He is making boss moves like, oh, gee, boss moves. On a daily basis, getting Gardner Johnson, uh, the Rager trade, and then he goes out and they were going to trade for Sermon. And instead, he was smart enough to chill the most, have a drink, sit back, light a cigar, watch the Niners cut him, and they got him for nothing. I mean, this guy, to me, is stealing the show in the NFL. And not just those three moves, but everything he's done is on a daily basis. I mean, this guy's like a dream GM, someone that refuses to sit around and accept the norm. He will do whatever it takes on a daily basis, not, not weekly, not monthly, not quarterly, not seasonally. Every day, this guy is making moves. He is blowing my mind. Yeah, that actually sets up, I'm glad you said this, this sets up the next point that we should talk about. You, you mentioned Trey Sermon and, and Roseman. We'll get to him in a second. Very, very interesting story, the Eagles general manager. So talking to the Niners about Sermon, he came in last summer. He clearly thought he, had, he was going to be their starting running back. No one was talking about Elijah Mitchell, who was a sixth-round pick. They drafted Sermon in the third round out of Ohio State. He had a great senior bowl week. He fit their zone scheme pretty well. And what happened was he did not have a very good training camp. In fact, one source told me he didn't have the urgency that you needed. He came in thinking that he was going to be the guy. Yeah, he did start week one. But he slowly lost his job. In fact, he, he wound up getting benched more or less. He was down in the depth chart to end last season. And he only really played when guys were hurt. And Elijah Mitchell was an unbelievable story who had his own injury issues. And he's actually hurt again, but they expect him to be ready pretty early on here. But getting back to Philly and Sermon. So the one thing, Pharrell, that Philly lacks at running back. In fact, they had two issues coming into training camp. Safety, as you mentioned, they made the trade for Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who will start as a free safety. And they, didn't, they lacked a power back. And they had a list of, of backs that they were looking at. Sermon was a guy that fit the mold of what they're looking for. They're, they wanted what we call a four-minute back. What does that mean? When you get a lead, the Eagles did this with Jordan Howard for many years. You want to go with that power back. The guy could eat up carries. Miles Sanders is not a goal line back. That's why Kenny Gainwell took that goal line job from him last season. They wanted right. someone with size, 225, 230, which Sermon is. And if they get a lead, and they're going to have a lot of leads, you know that. This, is, this roster has been pretty good. When they get a lead, they like Sermon to be the guy potentially. Now, they just got him off waivers. Yesterday, he was claimed off waivers. They got to see what he looks like, see what kind of shape he's in. He's got to learn their offense. Their offense is a little different from the West Coast offense that Kyle Shanahan runs. But 
The reason why the the, uh, the Niners cut Sermon is because of undrafted free agent Jordan Mason out of Georgia Tech, who was good from the very start of training camp. They want to risk cutting Mason, so they cut Sermon. Uh, he didn't clear waivers. He was claimed off waivers by Philly. And the reason why I've been so bullish, typically I'm not that bullish on the Eagles. I don't know how they made the playoffs last year. The roster wasn't very good. They've addressed every kind of issue on offense and defense. Wide receiver, they're absolutely loaded, one through four. You mentioned tra- trading Jalen Rager, who will be a punt returner uh, for the Vikings in their fourth receiver. They're lo- the NFL's best offensive line. Good defensive line rotation like they had during their Super Bowl, Super Bowl run in 17. Good at corner. Not super great depth at corner, but good enough. They just have the most complete team in the NFC East, maybe in the NFC. And again, how do you not like the over nine or nine and a half, depending on what it is? They had nine wins last year for all. You got to love the over there. So there's a lot of people that have uh, criticized uh, your opinion of them. Do you believe that, and I love that you stand by it and have the stones to argue about it uh, for their favor. Do you believe that they will make the NFC championship game? They have a very good chance. In fact, I would take those odds. I understand Jalen Hurts is a young quarterback. He didn't play well in the playoff game, his first one uh, at, at Tampa. They were severely underhand, really undermanned for that game. Right. Uh, they just didn't have enough talent. But Roseman got it. Look, we all see it. This is a good, very good roster, perhaps. Uh, and they're going to be right there. In fact, if you said to me, give me your top three teams you like to beat the odds. Phillies won. The Panthers are two at six and a half. And I'm going to shock you with this one. I still like the Jets over five and a half. I know that their schedule is really tough to start. Last time I checked, it's the 17 game season, folks. Don't overreact to early season schedules. Play the season out. That's what you do. And the, the Jets roster, Joe Douglas, you, you and I were there. You and I worked the draft for Sports Grid in Las Vegas. They've upgraded severely that roster. They, were at, they will absolutely be better than five and a half wins. Fair enough. I, I can't wait to sauce and Ferguson watch those guys play uh, at the next level. So who do you see against them, let's say, hypothetically, in a title game? Is it Tampa? Is it the Rams? Is there somebody I'm missing? Is it Green Bay? The top teams – see, okay, so the top teams in the NFC, we're, we'll, we'll give our picks next week. The Niners don't discount the Niners? The, you got to pick the Niners. Now, obviously, it's Trey Lance. We, we've outlined his issues with accuracy. It's a fact. This is not – conjecture this is fact that's the only issue and by the way that is we talked about this earlier this week with jimmy g coming back jimmy g gives an unbelievable insurance policy a for injury if lance gets hurt and b the big one if lance doesn't play well that one bears watching so the the teams are going to vie for the the mc crown the niners the rams the bucks the packers the eagles that's it I, I don't I, look. I, I see the Panthers being a wild card team. They're not going to get that. They're not going to beat the, the Bucks out. Uh, the, the Cardinals are not going to have DeAndre Hopkins until he serves his, after a six game suspension. That's going to be killer. You saw how bad they were when he wasn't playing. That's it. The NFC is not hard to figure out. Okay, so then flip the pancake to the AFC. The Bills open at SoFi. Everyone has them going to the Super Bowl. You got them at least going to the. Uh, title game, don't you, in the AFC? Yeah. Right now, I would have them go to the title game. But here, here's the thing. I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview for next week when we talk the three times. But I believe Denver's going to beat out Kansas City for the AFC West. I know that's that's not the chalky point. A lot of people think there's no way that Kansas City doesn't win it. In fact, I had a couple guys curse me out. I do radio in uh, Kansas City, and guy went off of me on Twitter, said, I don't know, football and all this stuff. Folks, yeah, quarterbacks make a difference, okay? You saw how bad it was with Drew Locke. A quarterback can mean four or five more wins. I'm telling you this. Denver is going to be terrific, and they're going to shock the world. They're going to win the AFC West. Okay, so they're going to win the AFC West. So you think it's going to be Denver and Buffalo in the title game? I do. I do. I love that title game. The, The top teams are obvious. Buffalo, Cincinnati, Tennessee, though I'm a little bit worried about the Harold Landry injury. We'll talk about that next week. Denver and Kansas City. And San Diego, no. Los Angeles, the Chargers, uh, the LAC, they've improved their defense from a town standpoint. I'm told that uh, the Chargers, they had a they had a sort of a plan this offseason to beef up their defense with size. They feel like they've done that. I spent two days, as you know, with them. We were on coast to coast out there uh, right. at the Jack uh, Hammond Park there. So they're going to be better. 
I just don't know if their defense will be elite, but they're going to be a wild card in the AFC West. And that, that is the, by the way, that is the stronger conference. Wait, from one hold, to on, a second. Stronger hold conference. on a second. Hold, hold on yep. a second. You talk about the Hammond Park in Los Angeles. What about the lovely park in Philadelphia where the girl was walking an alligator the other day? What is happening there? I didn't there? see that. Do we know well, what park I, I know. Is? Listen, you can't have a pet alligator and bring it down to a park in Philadelphia. Oh You'll get God. shot. I mean, this isn't Los Angeles and the sunshine and the ocean. You're walking around Philly with an alligator on a rope. Something's that. wrong there. You can't have it. Let me ask you this question. So you're <laughs> saying that three teams from the AFC West are going to make the playoffs, all three of them. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the absolutely. Charger, Denver, One, and Kansas City all make it. So everybody else yeah. in the AFC is screwed. Yeah, look, it's Denver, Kansas City, the Chargers, the Titans, the Bengals, <laughs> the Bills, and then the, the You're 17th. Drunk. The You're drunk. You're drunk. Check his urine, <laughs> Carver High. Your boy Kaplan. What's next? The Raiders are going to make it too. How about all four teams? We need to get we need to get Carver on to defend me next week. We're going to have Car, Car uh, We're going to have Carver oh, be my be my captain next week. Oh my God, this guy Good Kaplan. Job. Look at him. He's what's happened is. Uh, Carver, he's traveled so much. He's been in so many different hotels and time zones. He's like, he's like the guy that sniffs glue. He's like, something's <laughs> gone from the air in the hotel up into his brain. And he's starting to, he, he's, he's, he may move to Denver. This guy's moving to the AFC West. He may even get a little condo in Vegas. Adam, have a great weekend, buddy. I love you. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bama. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for an In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get begins. the winning edge only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. But who do you think, Kevin Walsh, is the best wideout in all the National Football League? Oh, boy. So I, I think we often lean towards the Devontae Adams. I, I think it's one of the most fascinating conversations because it feels like the answer to who's the best wideout changes quite often. One thing I always feel yeah. like I can revert back to, though, on someone who's not uh, near the top of this board and pretty much has no chance to have the most receiving yards due to a six-game suspension is DeAndre Huff. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. So speaking of hurt, Dalvin Cook, that's been his story the last few years. But certainly when he's on the field, the way I like to describe Dalvin Cook, Davis, is that when I'm playing against Dalvin Cook and I don't have him in fantasy and I know he's fully healthy, I'm worried. I'm worried going into that week because I know he's going to have a good game. Over 1,000 yards last year and six rushing touchdowns. Another top 10 pick for Dalvin Cook. But my guess is, uh, Davis, that this may be the last time we see Dalvin Cook. Go in. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I've been here for 25 years. They've had two good seasons, and, and they suck. Even then, they couldn't get it done. They, they couldn't get it done if the other team didn't show up for the title game. So uh, all I know is they don't win championships, and their quarterback's injured. They're preseason killers. That's what they are. They win every game in a preseason. They beat the Giants. Whoop-de-doo. They didn't cover. 
Thank God for the five. The Sports Grid Network. All right, first of all, Mafia's picks for the UFC Fight Night in Paris. Cyril Gaon over uh, Tuavasa, and then Whitaker over Vittori, and he's taken Ortiz over Ruiz in boxing. He's only lost uh, once, uh, and that was to Wilder, so he's taken Ortiz over Ruiz. There's some of your uh, fight picks uh, going into Saturday, a lot of action. Marcus May and the Saints arrested and accused of aggravated assault on the Ferrella finish with a firearm and a road rage incident. Your boy's second arrest this year. He's on a roll. Man paddles 846-pound pumpkin on the Missouri River to set the new world record known as the Cinder Ferrella Fella. Wales man ordered to leave a ship container he's been living in for 30 years. Living in the ship <laughs> container. Spain's famous... Tomatina Festival return this week, Carver High. People throwing tomatoes at one another. Ohio man expected to recover after being stung 20,000 times by bees. 11.8 million worth of cocaine seized from a truck reportedly carrying baby wipes. Now that's an idea. Toddler killed, 50 injured as a grapefruit-sized hail pummels a Spanish town. They had gigantic, like, softball-sized hail chunks hitting people in the head, killing people. Nearly 30,000 tomatoes spill onto a California highway, causing a chain reaction of crashes. Former NYC cop gets 10 years in the Capitol riots. He tried to impale a cop with a flagpole. Now he's going to do 10 hard in a federal prison. Nice job, asshat. DoorDash driver leaves a shocking customer note after eating a family's entire dinner. He said he was hungry and he hated his job. And so he was going to eat their food and consider it paying it forward. That's the note. <laughs> My man ate their dinner and then quit his job. GTD is next. And we'll see you tomorrow on In Game Live at noon to four with Joe Ranieri and I. And then I'll see you Monday on Coast to Coast.